Dear Patriots, before the news starts, please, subscribe to our patriotic channel by clicking the subscribe button. Give us a thumbs up to this video. Don't forget to leave your opinion below in the comments section. Share the news on Facebook and Twitter so you friends see it. Thank you. Bernie Sanders accuses Trump of playing the race card by meeting with Putin. Bernie Sanders, like most Democrats, have no right to accuse anyone else of playing the race card. However, in a recent CBS interview, Sanders accused President Trump of playing the race card after being asked about seeing Putin. Senator Sanders, you tweeted something this morning about the president and his meetings overseas. You said, quote, President Trump has never met a leader of an authoritarian nation that he didn't like. And you named Russia, China, Saudi Arabia. Is that really fair? President Obama hosted a state dinner with a Chinese president. He was quite solicitous of the Saudi king. And he tried a reset with Putin in Russia. Isn't this what presidents do? Asked interviewer John Dickerson. No, you want to make friendships. You want to have good relationships. But at the same time, as we have a president attacking the media every day as fake news, encouraging Republican governors around the country to suppress the vote, playing the race card in the sense of trying to divide us up by the color of our skin, by the country that we came from, said Sanders. While he's doing all of these things, he has wonderful things to say about Mr. Putin. The idea that he reports back to us that Mr. Putin said that Russia did not have anything to do in terms of interfering with our elections, and he believes him, while he does not believe the intelligence agencies of the United States of America, is beyond absurd, he said. So Sanders is saying that Trump shouldn't befriend other nations because he calls out fake news? Clinton rape victim Juanita Broderick blasts libs who believe are Moore's accusers but not her. Democrats and establishment Republicans clearly felt threatened by the fact that Alabama voters made their voices heard and chose former state Supreme Court Chief Justice Roy Moore to be their nominee in the special election to fill Jeff Sessions' Senate seat. In response, the anti-Moore forces have been pushing a wild. Disgusting story about Moore sexually abusing high school girls in the 1970s. Unsurprisingly, the liberal media has bought into this narrative, and Senate Majority Leader Mitch McConnell has called on Moore to end his candidacy. It is strange, then, that this same media did nothing when former Democratic President Bill Clinton was accused of sexual assault and even rape during the 1970s and 1980s, said liberal go Meja Chelsea Handler about Moore. Imagine being molested by an older man. Then that man denies ever doing it and then goes on and gets elected to United States Senate. What kind of message does that send to young girls everywhere? And men to all the men who abuse women? Juanita Bordrick does not have to imagine, because it happened to her when she was allegedly raped by Bill Clinton in 1978. Said Juanita about the Clintons on the Ingram Angle, I hope that they finally get what is due to them up. She continued, you know, that is why I was so enraged yesterday when Chelsea Handler tweeted what she did, and why I came back and tweeted what I did. You know, she supported my abusers in the 2016 presidential race. And I wanted it to say to her, I matter too. All victims matter. It doesn't matter if you are Democrat or Republican, if you are straight or if you are a gay, or if you believe in God or not, we all have the right to be believed. Are you glad Broderick is continuing to speak out, and is calling liberals out for their unbelievable hypocrisy? Six famous companies just pulled ads from Sean Hannity for crazy reason, will you boycott them? Many people feel that formerly rock-solid conservative news network Fox News has lost its way recently, with the dismissal of Bill O'Reilly and the fact that some on the network like Shep Smith and Chris Wallace have been voicing their negative views about Republican President Donald Trump. Host Sean Hannity, however, has remained strong as a reporter who has remained true to Republican principles and has not buckled to liberal hysteria. On Hannity and his radio show, 
Sean recently defended Republican Alabama Senate candidate Roy Moore against the politically motivated smears against him that he is supposedly a pedophile and a sexual assaulter. For speaking the truth, Hannity is now being targeted by companies who have been pulling their ads from his television show. The most prominent of these advertisers is coffee giant Keurig. The list of other companies so far includes E-Trade, 23andMe, Realtor.com, Eloquia and Nature's Bounty. Wrote one liberal named Angelo Carusoni in a Twitter message to Keurig, Good afternoon at Keurig. You are currently sponsoring Sean Hannity's show. He defends child molester Roy Moore and attacks women who speak out against sexual harassment. Please reconsider. Keurig executives buckled to this liberal and replied, Angelo, thank you for your concern and for bringing this to our attention. We worked with our media partner and Fox News to stop our ad from airing during the Sean Hannity show. Many people have been boycotting Keurig and the other companies in protest. Will you join them? Famous magazine just named Colin Kaepernick its Citizen of the Year, will you boycott it? It is deeply unsettling how the liberal biased American media continues to dishonor America's culture and traditions, as well as, of course, our country's military heroes, by heaping praise on retired NFL quarterback Colin Kaepernick and all the other players who have been kneeling during the national anthem. These press attacks against America reached rock bottom recently when GQ magazine, which underwrites liberal blowhard Keith Olbermann's anti-Trump video podcast The Resistance, decided to name Kaepernick as its Citizen of the Year. Wrote the magazine, much has changed in the four years since Colin Kaepernick was last on the cover of GQ. Back then he was the rippling superhero of a quarterback on the rise. But a simple act, kneeling during the national anthem changed everything. It cost him his job. It also transformed Colin Kaepernick into a lightning rod and a powerful symbol of activism and resistance. Fox News' Todd Starnes was enraged by GQ's selection of Kaepernick for this honor, writing in a piece against it, Apparently, GQ seems to think that disrespecting our military and spitting on our flag is a symbol of heroism and manliness. That's not citizenship, that's cowardice. He went on to state, it's quite telling when you consider who did not make the GQ Citizen of the Year list. Marine veteran Taylor Weston commandeered a pickup truck and rushed victims of the Las Vegas massacre to the hospital. He did not make the list. Nor did Stephen Williford, the Texas plumber who grabbed a gun and ran barefoot towards the First Baptist Church in Sutherland Springs. His actions stopped a madman from killing even more innocent people. The all-volunteer Cajun Navy did not make the list either. They pulled hundreds of citizens from the floodwaters in the aftermath of Hurricane Harvey. Will you boycott GQ for deciding to honor America hating Kaepernick like this? Breaking Jeff Sessions may name a special counsel to investigate Hillary, she's screwed. Liberals who live in a fantasy land still believe that Republican President Donald Trump, his son-in-law Jared Kushner and others will somehow all end up in jail as a result of special counsel Robert Mueller's investigation into so-called Russian collusion. However, it was recently revealed that former Democratic presidential candidate Hillary Clinton could be in huge trouble, since U.S. Attorney General Jeff Sessions is considering appointing his own special counsel to investigate her crimes. In particular, this investigation would focus on the deal that then-Secretary of State Clinton helped make in 2010 to sell part of a company called Uranium One, which mines the dangerous element, to Russian's nuclear agency Rosatom, which could be considered treason. This development was discovered in a letter written by Assistant Attorney General Stephen Boyd, which said, the Attorney General has directed senior federal prosecutors to evaluate certain issues raised in your letters. It went on to explain, these senior prosecutors will report directly to the Attorney General and the Deputy Attorney General, as appropriate, and will make recommendations as to whether any matters not currently under investigation should be opened, whether any matters currently under investigation require further resources, or whether any matters merit the appointment of a special counsel.
For his part, President Trump clearly seems to share Sessions' deep concern with Hillary's 2010 crime. He tweeted last month, Uranium deal to Russia, with Clinton help and Obama administration knowledge, is the biggest story that fake media doesn't want to follow. Do you think Sessions should open the investigation? Puerto Rico's governor destroys Univision anchor to his face for calling Trump racist. It is disgusting how people keep accusing President Donald Trump of being racist to Puerto Ricans after Hurricane Maria, despite the fact that he has committed billions of dollars in aid to helping the U.S. territory recover. Thankfully Puerto Rico's governor hit back hard recently when a Univision host again accused Trump of racism. Asked Univision's leftist reporter Jorge Ramos in Spanish to Puerto Rico Governor Ricardo Ricky Roslo, when President Trump says that the real catastrophe was what happened in Katrina and not in Puerto Rico, why did you not defend the Puerto Ricans? Why didn't you tell him, Mr. President, that is not correct? For many, you are very subservient. Roslo, who is a Democrat, defended Trump in no uncertain terms, saying, well, because he didn't say that the real catastrophe was one, and not in Puerto Rico. He spoke of the Katrina catastrophe, right, and what we have always asked the president, after expressions or a Twitter issue, is clarity. Does the president recognize that this is a disaster? Yes. I flew over the island with him and he could see that there are hundreds of thousands of homes in Puerto Rico that are destroyed, and he recognized that in the conversations we had and afterwards. Ramos then tried to make things personal, asking Ricky, why do you continue treating Donald Trump so well? Is there not racism in the way that Donald Trump has treated you, Puerto Ricans, Governor? Puerto Ricans keep dying, and despite all this your attitude with Donald Trump is still the same. Due to the lack of aid, Governor. Because the aid they need has not arrived. In other words, the deaths and the wounded are because of the lack of aid that the government of Donald Trump has not provided in time. Said Roslo, not buying Ramos smears, this is real simple. I am here to get results, right? Not to focus on what is being said or talked about. I've now just heard an expression where it is said, by the mayor of San Juan, that the real catastrophe is what Donald Trump is saying, when every day what we are seeing is that the real catastrophe is what happened here in Puerto Rico. It's a hurricane. It's caused massive damage. That's what we have to focus on. Are you glad Roslo said nasty Ramos straight?